So good afternoon, everybody, um, and thank you all for being here this afternoon. Uh, my name is Derek Brindisi. I am the town manager for, for the town of Plymouth. So I want to welcome you all um, to this great community and this, certainly this beautiful harbor. This is an opportunity to talk about you know, this, this legislation that is going to bring approximately $4.3 million uh, to the Plymouth community. And you know, that's a lot of money, um, especially with all the competing priorities uh, that are happening throughout the state. So you know, we greatly appreciate um, the support of the Baker Polito administration over the last eight years. And this is just another example uh, of that support. And, and I know that our harbor master and our director of environmental management are going to show you guys in a little while some of the projects that have been funded uh, here in the harbor over the last eight years. Uh, but I want to talk specifically about uh, some of the, uh, the funding and what it's going towards today. So, you know, I'll, I'll pick two in particular. So, where we're standing right now, approximately $3.3 million is going to go towards uh, stormwater improvements um, uh, for this, this parking area. Um, it will um, uh, create a new layout of the parking space, uh, max maximize the space. Um, but more importantly, it's going to help us with our stormwater uh, control. And so what does that do for a community like this? It, uh, it's going to... It's going to help our lobster industry, our aquaculture industry, and certainly help our recreational boaters. So again, $3.3 million um, is, going to, is going to create a big impact in where we're standing right now. And then additionally, you know, I had the opportunity um, about a month ago, so just so folks are aware, I just, um, I'm on my second tour uh, as uh, here in town. I was the um, assistant town manager from 15 to 17. I, I went to uh, uh, central, back to Central Mass uh, and came back here in February. And so I've been getting reacquainted with what's going on here uh, in this community. I had the opportunity to go to the Herring Run and learn more about what's going on over in that area. And so with this funding today, um, we're getting approximately $249,000, uh, which will be used up at the Jenny Grist Mill uh, to complete engineering and permitting of the bypass channel around the Grist Mill. It will provide improvements to both upstream and downstream migration of river herring and American ale and will complement all the previous work of the town brook. So again, you know, I think um, the support of the state for everything they, they're doing today to help us advance our cause um, uh, here in this community. Uh, so without further ado, uh, the last time I had uh, seen Lieutenant Governor uh, Polito was back in December. We were at the... Um, at the Mass Chiefs Association, so it's been some time since I've seen her, but, you know, uh, coming from Central Mass, and I know she comes from Central Mass, and uh, it's, it's, a, it's my great pleasure to introduce her um, uh, here this evening in Plymouth, uh, this afternoon in Plymouth, and uh, I appreciate everything you've done for us, Lieutenant Governor, uh, over the years, so uh, please come forward. It's always a pleasure to be here in Plymouth, and uh, thank you, Derek, very much for coming back to this community to be a part of uh, the um, amazing experience, but also uh, tremendous economic opportunities in this community. And it's been a real pleasure uh, over the course of the seven and a half years I've been serving along with Governor Baker to see the improvements along your harbor and, uh, and the infrastructure updates that were clearly needed in order to enhance uh, this area for boating, for recreational activities. It was all under the guise of getting the community ready for the big 400th celebration, but you utilize that important date and milestone to get to important updates that would be needed for then, but also for a very long time in the future to come, including that beautiful Harbor Master building that the Seaport Council was a part of funding along with the taxpayers of this community. I can't wait uh, since we are here to take a tour of that and get to see how it's functioning for all of you. I want to thank all the public safety officials. Uh, this is a, an important community for tourism. While you keep the people of this community safe, there are a lot of people that come here to visit and you've got a, a tall task uh, to manage through all that in the upcoming months. I just have a feeling it's gonna be a banner summer of activity uh, for all of you here in Plymouth. It's great to be with Representative Moratori and Lenatra and Senator Moran, and to be with members of the select board. Uh, many of you know Governor Baker and I started our public service as select people in our communities. So it well informed our experiences in prioritizing uh, communities as part of our 
agenda leading this Commonwealth. We figured it was a pretty simple proposition. If we can strengthen each community of the Commonwealth, we'll make it a stronger Massachusetts. And indeed, over the past seven and a half years, we have achieved that goal uh, together. I want to also uh, thank uh, Secretary Card and Under Secretary Stolba and Ron Armadon, uh, Commissioner. You got the whole crew with us today. I think everyone was dying to get out of the office uh, to come uh, and just be out and about again and to be with each other, which is which is critically important. So today, the the reason we're convening and here in Plymouth is to put the find details on Governor Baker's filing called the Forward Bill. The Forward Bill is an economic development bill on steroids. It uh, basically takes uh, $2.3 billion of bond authority that we will work with the legislature on and marry that to $1.2 billion of federal ARPA funds. You recall that the federal government shared with the states monies to help us recover from COVID. Uh, the legislature programmed half of those funds, and we feel strongly that the remaining dollars uh, need to be committed soon in order to make sure we don't miss the federal government's guidelines relative to committing those funds and being able to spend them down uh, by 2026. So those deadlines are going to come fast, 2024 to commit those funds and 2026 to spend them down especially when you have inflation and supply chain issues and labor challenges, and coupled with the fact that we together, communities of the Commonwealth and the executive office and the legislature, have worked so hard over these past years to identify shovel-ready projects, that there's no reason to delay deploying these dollars to help communities get to these projects that have been so, sort of sitting on the back burner because they haven't been enough resources to move them forward. So identified projects uh, ready uh, for uh, the, the commitment of funds can move forward in the communities of our Commonwealth. That's what the Forward Bill is all about. It's three and a half billion dollars and will go a long way to not only recovering from COVID but continuing to move Massachusetts forward from one end of the state to the other. Uh, I would say for Plymouth, uh, Derek, you did a really nice job highlighting some of the projects, uh, close to $3.4 billion in fi fishing and boating access improvements right here. You're going to hear from an expert, uh, Commissioner Ron Armadon, who's going to fill in the details there. Uh, you talked maybe about the Miles Standish State Forest and 600000 to support acquisition of a key parcel of environmentally sensitive land. That has obviously been a priority for this community, and that $600,000 will allow you to do that. $250,000 for the fish bypass that Derek's already spoken about, and $150,000 for the underutilized property program to support the conversion of the Oak Street School into new affordable housing units. So those are just examples here in Plymouth. And in every community of the Commonwealth, there are examples of projects, downtown developments, and things that communities want to get to uh, that with these funds hopefully working with the delegation here and their counterparts in the legislature, we can get these dollars to work for you. Finally, I just want to say thank you uh, to this community. You've been an incredible partner, not only through challenging times like COVID, but also for housing development, economic development, downtown development, uh, protecting the environment, coastal infrastructure, all the things that are critically important to you. But in this bill, we relied heavily on the community uh, compacts one-stop program that now is in its second year. And the legislature has been so supportive of the community uh, programs that our administration started, and we appreciate that. But we also have been able to develop through that process a way to identify projects that are ready and help communities get ready. For instance, in the first year of funding, we received $303 million of requests from communities. We were only able to fund $88 million with bond authority from the legislature. This year, again, another oversubscribed year of requests for the 10 to 12 major economic development programs like MassWorks that we just won't have enough funds for. So we know what the projects are. We know that they're ready. We know that they will be impactful in communities. And with these resources, we can help you move those projects forward. So let's get to work. And I again want to thank my colleagues in the legislature for all of your hard work. You have 
an existing year supplemental budget. You have a new budget for the next fiscal year. You've got a lot of legislation to work through. And I'm really hoping with the transportation bond bill and this supercharged economic development bill, we can keep the momentum going for Massachusetts. So thank you. And it's now my pleasure to introduce Secretary Card. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you, Lieutenant Governor Polito. Uh, it's an honor uh, to be here with all of you, and thanks to everyone for joining us uh, today in Plymouth. Um, the weather is starting to warm up. We have sunnier days ahead, and we know we're going to have very, we do, I promise we do, um, uh, and we're going to have very busy waterfronts. Um, it's even great on a, you know, a breezy day like today to see quite a bit of activity here, and it's just wonderful uh, to start thinking about um, all of the uh, opportunities that our residents will have to take advantage of places um, like this facility here across the Commonwealth. Um, during the pandemic, we know many, many more people flocked to our state parks and our waterfronts and uh, boat ramps um, to access fishing, um, just to you know find some some peace and and some time away. And and during that time, we realized it really is prudent to continue to make investments in all of these resources that we have here in the Commonwealth and there's no uh, no time like the present. We have an incredible opportunity right now uh, with the Forward Act, which has been filed uh, just last month um, to and dedicates uh, $1.2 billion in environmental and energy infrastructure programs um, across the Commonwealth. Um, as has been mentioned, some critical infrastructure right here um, in Plymouth, the, the Jenny Grist Mill, uh, the acquisition of um, some environmentally uh, uh, sensitive uh, land parcels uh, at Miles Standish, um, and then of course um, investing in infrastructure right here at this boat access facility. So often uh, when we make investments, especially uh, in environmental and, and environmental infrastructure, um, it's it's stuff we can't see, right? And so one of the most important parts uh, that uh, that we're learning about for this particular project is stormwater management and making sure that we have a method for managing stormwater and um, uh, improving its quality, getting rid of the solids, the oils, the, the grease that we have from cars before it, it overflows and, and discharges. And so um, stormwater management and, and is important to water quality, um, but also improving visitor experiences to places like this is the key part of what we're trying to accomplish um, with these funds. Um, safety is also a concern. So making sure that boaters and families that are here visiting have safe access in and out of the water. Um, this is a critical investment Investment, not only for the people of Plymouth and for those here, but as the Lieutenant Governor mentioned, for all of the visitors that like to come um, take advantage, uh, this site uh, is important to the South Shore region as well. Um, the Forward Act, uh, as we're talking about here today, also includes uh, investments for uh, including $230 million to address state park system, associated infrastructure, trails and campground expansions, $60 million for water and sewer projects, including combined sewer overflow uh, mitigation and lead service line replacement projects, and $750 million in our clean energy sector. Um, as we work hard to uh, advance towards our decrease carbonization goals and our climate goals in Massachusetts. Uh, our reliance on renewable energy is incre in incredibly important, and we will use the $750 million to continue to invest in research and innovation and workforce development in our clean energy sector. So, so many things that are important to all of us on the environment and energy side. Um, I can't emphasize enough, as the Lieutenant Governor did, that time really is of the essence with these funds. Um, we have an opportunity, really, of a lifetime to make these big investments now and so we are so excited about the potential um, to have access to these funds and we are um, so looking forward to working with our colleagues in the legislature as well as uh, lo other local officials um, as we move forward so thank you all for being here uh, look forward to working with you um, and it's also now my pleasure uh, to turn the podium over to Undersecretary Ashley Stolba. Thank you so much, Secretary Card. It is so nice to be here in Plymouth. I am from the Cape, from a town soon to be in Senator Moran's district. Um, so it's always so fun to come to one of our 78 coastal communities. 
So I am so proud of the work that we've been able to do over the past seven and a half years, particularly as it relates to economic development. And that's really because of our great partnership and the hard work from our colleagues in the state legislature. We've passed a series of economic development blueprints, most notably our Partnerships for Growth Strategic Plan. The pillars that we created together back in 2019, responding to the housing crisis, building vibrant communities, support business competitiveness, and training a skilled workforce, these are all just as critical now as they were back then. And we created the forward bill based on those four pillars. The Lieutenant Governor mentioned the potential investments that we can make in key areas here in Plymouth including the ones right here, right at the boat ramp. But projects like these that were created from the community, with the community support that are shovel ready, these are the kind of projects that we seek to fund with the ARPA funds. And through the passage of this bill, the investments detailed would be building upon the previous investments that we've made right here in Plymouth. You've received over $3 million from the Seaport Council, which the Lieutenant Governor chairs and I vice chair, and also two separate dredging awards. And we hope to reauthorize both of those programs to continue the momentum. She also highlighted the success of the Community One Stop for Growth. This was a wildly successful program last year. It closes tomorrow and we're expecting it to be just and if not more popular this year. But that's why we're so excited to reauthorize our key programs like MassWorks and increase authorizations for popular programs like United Underutilized Property, Small and Rural Town Development and Community Planning. We're also seeking to reauthorize important housing programs, such as the Climate Resilient Affordable Housing Program, and we'll also seek to support the state's public housing stock. I do just want to echo what the Lieutenant Governor and Secretary Card mentioned about urgency of spending and allocating funding from this bill. I was on a call earlier this morning with Secretary Heffernan, and he said 2024 and 2026, that's like next year when we're talking about public infrastructure progress. And, and he's right. We know we're all dealing with labor shortages and workforce issues and supply chain issues, and we will be competing with communities all across the country for supplies and even workers. So we really want to put a leg up and put our communities in the best position possible by allocating these funds now so you can be front in the line for those services. So thank you. I look forward to working with the legislature and passing this bill. And it's now my pleasure to introduce the Department of Fish and Game Commissioner, Ron Amidon. Thank you very much. And uh, I want to Thank Lieutenant Governor Polito, Secretary Codd, and the Town of Plymouth, our partners in managing this facility for us. Um, really appreciate everybody spending the time to be here today. The Department of Fish and Game and our Division of Fishing and Boating Access is a very small division. Uh, we only have eight employees in the Division of Fishing and Boating Access, one of the four that we oversee. Uh, they manage well over 300 facilities across the Commonwealth by partnering with municipalities such as the Town of Plymouth. Um, the Division of Fishing and Boating Access accomplishes this through their partnerships in land management. Uh, and they've signed land management agreements with over 185 municipalities, as well as other entities like DCR and Army Corps of Engineers, who take care of all of the law enforcement, trash removal, and day-to-day -day operations and management. The Division of Fishing and Boating Access has four of these types of facilities in the town of Plymouth, and the town has been a great partner in managing these. Uh, we appreciate the Harbor Master, the Department of Public Works, and the Police Department for all of their efforts in making sure that this facility is run in tip-top shape day in and day out. Uh, the Plymouth Harbor Boat Access Facility is one of two of the largest in the entire state of Massachusetts. Here we have well over 100 parking spaces for vehicles with trailers, and we have over 15 uh, car top boat uh, parking spots. There are thousands of recreational boaters, anglers, lobstermen, small commercial fishing boat people that utilize this facility each year. But just as importantly, if not more importantly, some of the people that utilize these ramps are under the worst of times, and that is our police, fire, rescue, and MEP folks that utilize these ramps when we're having things like floods and hurricanes and snowstorms. Originally constructed in 1980, this boat ramp uh, and the floating docks were reconstructed in 2017. And now the time has come and passed that we should be addressing this parking lot. So the monies that we're looking for from this Forward Act funding 
are crucial that we get this project going as soon as possible. The uh, construction and maintenance of facilities such as these has obvious recreational benefits to the thousands of boaters and anglers who use it every year in every season. These projects also are very important to the Massachusetts economy. Massachusetts has more than 1,200 marine trade businesses which support over 20, 27,000 jobs in the state and $2 billion in economic output. And the recreational anglers alone that use these kinds of facilities spend approximately $475 million a year in Massachusetts and support more than 7,000 jobs and produce more than $830 million in economic output. The Department of Fish and Game is very grateful to the Baker Polito administration for the proposals to enhance the fishing and boating access through the forward bill. The bill proposes more than $7 million in fishing and boating access and another $5 million for recreational fishing piers. This funding will support this project and many other projects <clears throat> such as in the town of Edgartown, Egremont, Merrimack, Methuen, Newburyport, Salem, and Somerset. I want to thank you all again for your time here today, and it's my pleasure to introduce our partner, Plymouth Harbor Master Chad Hunter. Thank you very much for that introduction. Um, I just wanted to start by thanking the, the Baker Polito administration uh, for their tremendous support over the years for maritime in infrastructure. Since 2017, Plymouth has partnered with Seaport Economic Council and the Executive Office of Housing and Economic Development on seven major projects within Plymouth Harbor. The replacement of T-Wharf, two rounds of dredging, uh, one round to dredge the Mayflower II's berth for her return, repairs to Town Wharf, the bulkhead project, which is currently underway, almost finished, uh, the boat ramp project and the new maritime facility, totaling over $24 million in investments in Plymouth Harbor. This investment has re revitalized Plymouth Harbor and ensures the harbor to remain prosperous for years to come. The Leo DeMarche boat ramp funding within the Forward Act will provide for stormwater improvements and resurfacing, helping to enhance water quality and maintain a vital piece of infrastructure. This is really the connector from shore to the harbor. The boat ramp is one of the busiest in the state, supports recreational boating commercial use, including aquaculture, lobstermen, and small businesses, and public safety use. I also want to express my sincere thanks to the Office of Fishing Boating Access, Director Doug Cameron, for submitting this project. I've worked with Doug my entire career here in Plymouth, and he's always been extremely helpful and advocated for this important infrastructure. Thank you. Hi folks, I'm uh, Charlie Bletzer, one of the selectmen in Plymouth, and I just want to uh, thank the Lieutenant Governor uh, for, for the funding that's going to help support this ramp, which is the focal point of our, our beautiful waterfront. Plymouth is the largest town in the, in the state of Massachusetts. Our number one industry is tourism, and without funding like this, we couldn't, we couldn't compete and we couldn't exist. So it, it, I, I really want to thank her for that. Uh, public safety, uh, public safety officials, uh, they speak for themselves. They keep us safe. This waterfront is, is thriving. You come down every day of the week in the summer, the, the crowd's down here. In the, in the, in the, between the Harbor Master and the Plymouth PD and the fire, they keep us safe here. I want to thank them. And now it's, it's my pleasure to introduce our delegation. Uh, our delegation works together, uh, Democrats, Republicans, uh, to, to help. It's all about the community of Plymouth. It's not about the party. It's about what's best for the community in, in Plymouth. And I want to thank, uh, actually I want to introduce, first of all, our Senator, Sue Marin. Sue Marin is filling big shoes from Vinnie DiMacito, and before that, Senate President Therese Murray. Sue's from the Cape, but she's really from Plymouth now. I, I can't. <laughs> she's a big part of this Plymouth community, and I want to thank her. Also, Matt Muraturi. Uh, Matt's been, been, how many years now, Matt? How many terms? Four terms, and he's invaluable. 
and Kathy Lanatra, our other state rep, again, they work together, Democrats, Republicans, for the, for the community of Plymouth. We even dress alike, too. I know. They, they dress alike, too, yeah. But anyway, that's it. That's all I have to say. I want to say thank you. Okay. Thank you, Charlie. Thanks, Charlie. I'll come up if you like, whatever. Uh, so thanks, Charlie. That's one of the nicest introductions I've ever received. Uh, you all know that you hardly ever get a word from me that doesn't include a mention of economic development. I think it's important to mention that we have the Chamber of Commerce here, as well as just incredible representatives for economic development for Plymouth. Um, I want to thank the Lieutenant Governor, Secretary Card, everyone in the Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs for organizing this uh, discussion and event, and thanks to um, Town Manager Brindisi for hosting. There's no better place suited to highlight the importance of fishing and boating industries to our communities here on the South Shore than Plymouth Harbor, as the uh, harbor master mentioned, right across from the Mayflower. Fostering opportunities for economic development and generating over $6 million in commercial catches annually. Plymouth, like many coastal communities, is a hub for commerce and recreation and would benefit greatly from the $3.5 billion in investments outlined in the FORWARD program. FORWARD recognizes the role that our aquatic industries play here in the Commonwealth by investing millions to expand fishing and boating access. Where Plymouth Harbor would see the most gain is in this bill's direct investments in municipal infrastructure. According to the Massachusetts Division of Marine Fisheries 2021 Commercial Fishing Port Report, the most frequent concerns by local fishermen and industry stakeholders concern the harbor's lack of physical space and amenities for docking and commercial offloading and parking. Forward targets the $4 million for the region, including funding for initiatives that will further enable the harbor's storm preparedness, as you have heard, as well as economic sustainability and ability to handle additional traffic from commercial fishing vessels. I recently had the opportunity to speak with a member of the Massachusetts Lobstermen Association, along with the harbor master. Am I lucky in this job or what? They operate right here, out of the harbor. As a member of MLA, this gentleman <coughs> recognizes the need to strike a balance in creating a commercial fishing industry that is viable, yet environmentally sustainable. Lobstering represents the best of South Shore business. With multiple generations in the industry, he understands that our Aquatic ecosystem and port communities must be protected for fishermen to survive. That's why I'm so encouraged to see $1.2 billion in climate resiliency and preservation efforts that will ensure our coastal communities will survive and thrive. The forward bill also recognizes the need to invest in workforce. For people in the fishing and boating industry, we must make sure they can continue to live and work in Plymouth. For folks, for whom generations of their families have lived in Plymouth, we don't want them to leave because they can't afford the mortgages. That's why I'm encouraged that Forward includes well over $200 million to support access to housing through initiatives like repairs to public housing units, the Housing Development Incentive Program, and the Smart Growth Housing Trust Fund. We want workers who choose Plymouth to remain a part of this community by building a resilient economy, Forwards $970 million to support revitalizing downtowns and communities and $325 million in workforce efforts will do just that. We have a real opportunity here to make a difference with Forward. We elevate the significance of our state's coastal trades in our environment and our economy. And I am grateful for the administration to put this program forward as fo forward prioritizes investments that will give our municipalities the resources they need to grow and innovate for generations to come. And now I want to introduce my partners in the delegation, Representative Muratori and Lenatra. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, everyone, for coming out today. I'm glad the rain 
Stay it away, and I see the sun is coming. Um, I think everything has been said. The gratitude is here. This is not only for Plymouth, but a great opportunity for the whole Commonwealth for all of the infrastructure projects that have not been able to be done. You know, we've been put on the back burner. We've all driven the roads. We've all been at our seashores and see the improvements that need to be made. And this, again, moving forward, is very important to all our municipalities in the Commonwealth. So thank you for to the Baker Polito administration. It's been a wonderful three years that I've been in working with you and a great partnership. And my great partner, Matt Muratori. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. It's great to see you all here today. I just want to recognize uh, Stephen Cole from the Plymouth Area Economic Foundation uh, and Amy, Amy Naples from the Air Plymouth Area Chamber of Commerce as well for being here. Thank you. You know, and, and David Gould is here too, our Director of Environmental Services here, and Captain Manuel. And it does take a community here to build what we have here. And, and we really want to welcome you back again, Lieutenant Governor, uh, Secretary, Undersecretary, Commissioner. Thank you for coming. We appreciate that. You know, uh, I've been involved with uh, the Baker Polito uh, administration from the very beginning. And we've seen so many changes here uh, in Plymouth over the last uh, seven and a half years, and it's because of their leadership. Uh, yes, you know, we always talk about the, the Plymouth uh, 400, uh, all the funding we were going to be getting and uh, that big party we were going to have, but never happened. But as the Lieutenant Governor alluded to, um, we were smart in how we did this and we put it in infrastructure. And we got tens of millions of dollars for, through the uh, pa Baker Polito administration for infrastructure because it wasn't going to be just for 2020, it was going to be beyond 2020 for decades to come. And we've already seen the crowds coming here for tourism as of last year. We broke records last year. We are starting to break records again this year as well. And it's because of that money that we got. And this money that we're going to be getting as well is all, going to be just as important. And we're going to do all we can, Lieutenant Governor, uh, to actually get this forward bill passed before the end of session of July 31st. So once again, thank you all for being here, and thank you for coming out, Lieutenant Governor. Thank you very much. Uh, great. So again, thanks, everybody, for coming. I want to recognize Donna Rodriguez from PAC-TV, um, who this is PAC-TV, for those of you that don't know, is our local access um, channel. And so this event will be televised throughout 20,000 communities here in, in the community. Um, and so what will our residents see? They will see um, the support of the Baker Polito Administration, uh, environmental affairs, economic development. They'll see that support and how that money is going to be used here in this community. And last, they're going to see the, uh, the staunch advocacy of our state delegation. Uh, this could not be possible without their advocacy um, over at Beacon Hill. So I thank everyone for coming. We're going to do two things before we leave. We're going to take photos. And then after photos, uh, David Gould, our Director of Environmental Management, and Chad Hunter, our Harbor Master, will give folks a tour to look at the various projects that this money has uh, gone towards already and will be coming in the future. So again, thank you all for coming.